visual novel official translations have basically been 90% or more of all visual novel English releases of Japanese titles in the last five to seven years or so. For the most part, even with mild disagreements with translation choices, generally people like the final products enough of official translations to the point where most fans don't avoid outright reading a title or waiting for a patch. However, over the many years of visual novel translations, there have been occasional what many like to call fan improvement patches made because of fan disagreement or outright hate of some of the translation or presentation of some aspect of an official English visual novel release. So in this video, I'm going to cover and explain various fan improvement patches to official translations of visual novels and the potential pros and cons of each of them. Let's start off with a pretty goofy yet common complaint, the over-localization of the word Onichan. In case you don't know, Onichan is essentially a common affectionate way for Japanese girls to call an older guy their big brother, whether they're actually blood related or something of a big brother figure that they're not even blood related to. Generally, to keep the weebs happy, companies like Nekonyan will keep all honorifics in their translations, which naturally includes when characters say Onichan. Some official translations, like certain ones by Shirobune, tend to go with the more overly direct translation Big Brother, which technically works and generally doesn't get much complaints. However, there are some times where the official translations can get pretty creative with what they choose to localize Onichan as. The first example of this is the character Sora Nimi from 99, who in the Japanese text calls the main character Onichan, Nini, and the like. However, in the official localization by Sekai Project, she has been localized to sometimes call her big brother Broski, Bromeo, or various nicknames like that. Another example is the character Chiho from the manga gamer translated visual novel If You Love Me, Then Say So, or Suki Suki. This character is not even related to the main character, and in fact, has some degree of amnesia, and when she first meets the main character, she starts calling him Onichan in the original Japanese release for some reason. This got localized to Chiho Kong, the main character, dude, in the text. The most recent and most controversial example is in the Shirovune translated title Kamiyawa, where the main character's cousin Mao, a side heroine, calls the main character Onichan or similar words in the original Japanese, but in the official localization, it's been translated to Bubby. If you've never heard of this word bubby before, and trust me, I did not hear it with myself before this release, this is apparently an affectionate term used to refer to brothers in a familiar way in certain parts of the southern part of the United States of America. Suffice to say, all these localizations were just too much for some people to the point where all three of these examples have gotten fan-made patches to change these characters back to calling the main character Onichan or whatever term was used to match the Japanese text. One minor thing I haven't mentioned yet is that almost every fan improvement patch that I'm going to mention in this video ha has to do with localization, text changes will always return all honorifics as well as having Japanese name order with last name first name, as well as any characters that do third person speak, so just assume all fan patches related to localizations in this video will have changes like this. Now the question is, why do these localization choices even exist? Generally, honorifics are a pretty big discussion point among official versus fan translators as generally leaving honorifics in an English transition doesn't really make much sense objectively if you're just trying to make the characters talk in native English. The reason is that in Western cultures, people generally don't call anyone the equivalent of big brother or big sister or the like. For cases like Asora from 99, I'm guessing part of why the translator had her make meme-like names for her big brothers because Sora herself is kind of a gremlin or a big troll who simultaneously loves her big brother, but also likes to clearly get a rise out of annoying him. For Chiho from Tsukisuki, I'm guessing why she was told to call the main character Dude is due to it being a casual way for two characters who don't even have anything close to an actual sibling relationship refer to each other casually, and the translator wanted some way for this random girl to refer to the main character that's older than her. As for Mao from Kamiyaba, Every Shirovune title translated before Amanatsu has had straight guidelines to never have any Japanese honorifics. So the translator was likely trying to find a fancy way to have the cousin character call the main character something different since the main heroine, Urara, already calls the main character the direct translation, Big Brother. I'm going to assume the translator or editor lives, lived, or knows somebody from the southern part of the United States as a basis of why they used Bubby for the replacement for Onichan. Now, on a personal level, I personally don't care about honorifics in visual novels and do think it's pretty funny when people heavily complain they are not in any sort of way. However, I do think these three cases are situations where the official translators probably went a little too far trying to remove them. I know people dunk on Soul Press, but controversies like this could easily just be solved by having an honorific toggle or something, especially for those super localized translations of things like Onichan. But either way, I generally consider Onichan localizations as a minor part of translations and 
There are likely many other issues in official Japanese English translations that could be criticized, but I guess Onichan just happens to be one of the few Japanese culture words that most English readers will actually recognize and can complain about. A sometimes contentious decision for localized translations is when Japanese characters talk in English. If you don't know what English is, it's a fan term where Japanese people attempt to speak the English language but with a strong Japanese accent and generally people find it funny and charming because their attempt to speak a language they're clearly not used to. <laughs> I can no English I find that generally most visual novel translators are perfectly fine with just using the English text equivalent in the translation. However, there are some cases where visual novel translations have made it a point to attempt to localize the feeling of hearing English without using the direct English text. A perfect example of this is in Chrono Clock with the foreigner character DD. This character is noted for being your average joke foreigner character in Japanese media, who's obsessed with Japanese culture and video games and the like, and makes a lot of random lines in English. In Sekai Project's official localization, they attempt to recreate the feeling Japanese readers would get of hearing an otherwise good Japanese speaker say random English lines. The official localization had Didi talk like an overly cringe western weeb where instead of Didi originally having her English lines in English, the text would instead have romanized Japanese words. Now I get the idea behind this. As I said, I think the mindset is that the localizer wanted people to experience the feeling of someone trying way too hard to speak a language they clearly don't know that well. However, the potential issue comes with the text clashing with the voice acting. Most English readers are likely going to be reading Japanese-made visual novels with Japanese voice acting on, and when you can clearly hear that Japanese voice actor say something in English, the text not matching up with the voice will likely annoy some Western readers. Naturally, as per the theme of this video, this led to a fan patch purely to change Didi's localized weeb Japanese speak and instead just have her directly say her English in, well, English text, among other things. While we're on the topic of localization, let's go to a more obscure specific one with the Nekonyan translated title Renai X Royale developed by Asa Project. Asa Project visual novels tend to be very comedy heavy and one of the recurring jokes is the main character's male childhood friend Yoshinori constantly makes comments about not trusting the girls in the harem among other various pessimistic complaints. Sometimes a couple of the characters call Yoshinori an incel in the official localization. If you don't know what the word incel means, the technical definition is it's short for calling someone involuntarily celibate. It's a term meant for guys who act in a way that makes it clear they're not getting girls purely by the way they talk and their viewpoints despite clearly wanting to get girls or sex. I've noticed the complaints about this localization and why this fan patch exists comes down to two things. If you look up the Japanese word the characters use to make fun of Yoshinori, it is inkia, which technically means a loner of sorts. This is a more broad term insult, which more implies the person is just a general negative thinker, gloomy, or asocial. This doesn't technically imply the person wants a girlfriend or sex, but is doing things to prevent that, but it could lead to that incel definition depending on your interpretation. Which leads me to the potential second point of contention, what the word incel actually means to people when they say it. I've noticed that unfortunately, the word incel tends to be more politically charged these days, especially on Twitter discussion around viewpoints that don't necessarily have to do with wanting girlfriends or sex. And I'm talking both sides of these online arguments. Whether you agree with this localization choice and Renai X Royale is at least partially based on the person's interpretation of what the word incel means. This also brings up the argument of whether social media slang should even be in visual novel translations due to readers who don't use social media potentially not getting terms like these. One of the bigger recent cases of fan patches that were purely due to localization choices was the original Nukatashi one translated by Shirvune, although technically the translation and editing started with Soul Press before getting handed over. Now, Nukatashi is also a very comedy heavy title with characters making constant sex jokes and the visual novel itself making various goofy references to other things very directly. Now the question is if some of these references in the official translation are fitting to the original Japanese text and jokes. I would say in the original translation, as is, a bunch of them do fit, but there are a few that go into really old school internet specific western memes like Twitch or 4chan references from the early 2000s and or slang from more recent times. And then there's the whole thing where the original villain group that enforced people to have sex publicly was called the SS in the original, but the official translation changed this to FS. On a minor note, like all Shirovune titles, there are absolutely zero honorifics. While Nukatashi was generally well read even before this fan patch came out, there were also a bunch of people who just refused to read this with all the over-the-top localization choices that got screen capped. 
As of this video, there is now a fan improvement patch that changes all the issues I mentioned. Given how I framed these so-called issues, you would think this would be a universally approved patch. But believe it or not, there are people who not only like the original Nukatashi translation, but prefer these over-the-top western slang localizations as they think it fits the writing of the story. So I guess whether this patch is worth applying or not depends on whether you prefer these localization jokes and honorifics. And just to quickly get it out of the way, Nukatashi 2's official translation was generally much better received by the anti-localization people to the point where the improvement patch guy even noted that it's way better in general. That said, Nugatashi 2 will still have things like FS and no honorifics, so if you still want those back in, there is also an improvement patch for Nugatashi 2. We're on the topic of patches that fix multiple things, let's go to the original Majikoi, Love Me Seriously, more specifically the JAST official translation that released in 2019. The actual translation for Majikoi was generally well received and it helps that they got help from the original fan translation group that existed for about 5 years at that point. However, there are a few unfortunate things about the Majikoi official release with one of them being out of Jas control. More specifically, Majikoi has a shit ton of characters and Majikoi is just a very long visual novel spanning over 50 hours if you read every single route. Unfortunately, due to this important thing called paying voice actors even for older games, Jas apparently just did not have enough money to pay for every single minor character and there's at least 40 to 50 of them. They were only able to get voices by default for the original Cosma family main characters, aka the main 9 plus Gensan. Thankfully, a fan patch exists purely to add all the voice acting in. Unless you just really like picking and choosing which characters to get voice acting or not, there's basically no reason not to get this patch to read the way Machiko was originally tended with all the Japanese voice acting. There is another fan patch which I would say is a little bit more optional or hit or miss depending on whether you agree with a certain localization choice or not. More specifically, Yamato, the main character, has these pet hermit crabs, and in the original Japanese release, these hermit crabs were called Yadan and Karin, which were a pun on the word Yadokari, aka the literal definition of hermit crabs in Japanese. The official localization of Majikoi changed these hermit crab names to be Hermi and Kraba as a goofy way to preserve the pun in English so that people who don't know Japanese would actually get the joke. I've noticed this localization is probably more of an issue with people who have been reading the fan translation for over 5 years now. I think it's just goofy looking when, when every other Japanese name in the official JAST localization is exactly the same as the fan translation. Let's briefly get off localization translation choices for a bit and talk about a fan improvement patch that's purely on the presentation level. More specifically, the Umineko series. The version you're seeing on screen right now is the original as it released way back in 2010. As you'll notice, the graphics look a little goofy, it's NVL, and you can't hear it, but there's absolutely no voice acting. Manga Gamer released their official version on Steam, and while they have different, better looking sprites based off a of pachinko machine from Japan, ultimately it's still NVL and still does not have any voice acting by default. So where does the fan patch comes in? Well, it involves getting assets from the PS3 port that released in Japan, originally developed by Alchemy. This Umineko PS3 port fan project is one of the biggest fan patches I've seen to date. Not only are you giving the option of choosing between ADV and NVL, you are given the option to have more crisp, modernized sprites of the characters that seem to be universally seen as the definitive designs for the characters. There are also CGs that are specific to the PS3 version, which, which once again aligns with modernized visual novel standards. But most importantly, for me personally, there's a voice acting by some very big time Japanese voice actors and a lot of the hammy dialogue in the Umineko series just gets even more entertaining with them. While there's probably a minority who prefers NVL and likes to read their visual novels without voice acting so they can imagine the voices themselves, for over 90% of Umineko fans I've seen, they basically see this PS3 fan patch as the definitive version to read the series and outside the headache it could be to install, there's basically no reason not to install this at least as a potential option. On a quick side note, everything I just talked about for Umineko applies to Higarashi as well. Another visual novel that got a fan improvement patch purely at the presentation level was Subahibi or Wonderful Everyday. One that's pretty wholesome and one not so wholesome. The first one is somewhat similar to Umineko in that Subahibi got an updated voice patch. The English release for Subahibi was based on the original Japanese release. However, sometime after, in Japan, the developer released a full voice HD edition that adds new sprites, new CGs, and full voice acting for the characters. Thankfully, someone was able to make a fan patch that adds these new Japanese graphics and voice acting to the official English release. As for the other not wholesome fan improvement patch, without getting too into spoilers, there's a very infamous dog H scene in Subahibi. 
Even with Front Wing's official 18 plus restoration patch, they only include the scene in terms of the writing, but did not include the original CG that was in the H scene. Instead, just showing a black screen, which I assume was due to the company being afraid of people getting too squicked out by this relatively early scene. Naturally, this led to the typical arguments about censorship and such. If you really want to see this scene with the dog CG intact, there is a patch to add it back in. Or on the topic of full game improvements, we definitely cannot leave out the fan group, the Committee of Zero, who dedicates making big fan translations and improvement patches to official translations of the Science Adventure series. This include games like Robotics Notes and Stein's Gate. For the sake of this video, I'm going to use Chaos Head Noah as it's been noted by them to have the highest amount of changes they've had to update and re-add. Despite the fact that Chaos Head Noah was the first science adventure visual novel to release in Japan, by some stroke of anti-luck, Chaos Head Noah was actually one of the last science adventure visual novels to get an official translation. Since the science adventure series has slowly been building up a long-running subplot, they've had time to make terms that are consistent throughout the series. However, apparently in Chaos Head Noah, there are some official translations of certain terms that are inconsistent that are otherwise used relatively consistently throughout the franchise. The Committee of Zero made it a point to make things as consistent with both fan improvement patches they've made before in the other science adventure visual novels they've worked on. Chaos Head Noah also had the unfortunate aspect of being one of the most consistently censored visual novels in Japan over time through various ports. Since Chaos Head Noah is a psychological horror at heart, there are very, very gruesome scenes in some of the side routes, and apparently in Japan, with each subsequent port and release, some gruesome scenes got censored more over time. By the time the official Steam version got released, we got the most censored version of Chaos Head Noah by far. The Committee of Zero made it a point to include this overly censored scene in its full glory in the original Japanese release. There are also various other things like them translating songs, CGs, and additional subtitles, but basically for Chaos Head Noah, People see the Committee of Zero improvement patch as the definitive way to experience Chaos Head Noah, and for that matter, every other science adventure visual novel since they have at least had a minor patch for each of them. The final subsection of this video I'm going to use for talking about a very specific and fitting aspect of visual novels, re-adding back 18 plus sex content into official all ages releases of visual novels. Now thankfully for the most part, 95 plus percent of visual novels that started off as 18 plus Edo gay in Japan if they do get an all ages release on Steam without getting banned, usually there's a patch outside of Steam by the official translators themselves in order to add back the content in. Most of the time it's free, but very occasionally it's not. However, there are a very small handful of cases where there's no official way to add back the 18 plus content, whether due to the original Japanese developer or the English publisher just simply not giving a way to give out this 18 plus content for free for whatever reason. So this is where some fans have had to add back the content themselves. A pretty amusing one to start out with is Baldur's Sky since apparently Giga, the original Japanese developer, was the one that was opposed to having an official 18 plus restoration patch. Thankfully, a small one and done group called Shadow Wolf released an 18 plus patch for Baldur's Sky shortly after the game officially released. However, considering how shortly this patch came after release, some people have speculated that this group might just be some people who either Sekai hired to get out without getting in trouble, or they themselves just made a secret alt account to do it. Either way, without this fan group, Baldur's Sky readers would not have had the potential for optional 18 plus content re-added back in. An interesting yet unfortunate version of this is with the official release of The Princess, The Stray Cat, Manners of the Heart, or Nora Toto. Unlike Baldur's Sky, I'm not sure why there is no 18 plus patch. It could just be that Tokyo Toon, the developer, did not want 18 plus content, or it could be that Fruit Bat Factory, the official translator, makes it a point to never include this content. I'm not sure. Once again, this is where fans come in, but the unfortunate part is, as of this video, they have only done an 18 plus partial patch for one route for the childhood friend Gyaru, Yuki. This unfortunate partial patch is one of the many potential issues of a fan translation. Depending on motivation, time, or other factors, fans just simply aren't able to translate a whole game if they're unable to. A very extreme case of no 18 plus content in an official release is with Moe Novel's If My Hearted Wings or Konosora. Moe Novel first released If My Hearted Wings on Steam in the early 2010s. This is a pretty remarkable release as it's probably the first Japanese made visual novel to get an English translation on Steam and have it get incredibly popular. As of this video, having 4,000 reviews, which is pretty insane for a Japanese made visual novel especially for one without a popular anime adaptation like Clannad or Stein's Gate. However, while If My Heart Had Wings was popular with the casual audience who likely didn't even know what an 18 plus arrow gay was, for the hardcore visual novel online community, 
The original Moe novel release was seen as a joke and the poster child of official localizers trying too hard to censor 18 plus content. This was long before official translators having 18 plus patches was a necessity for an original Japanese 18 plus release, whether free or with a slight fee. However, to this day, Moe novel has never made any of their releases have an official 18 plus optional patch. It doesn't help that Moe novel made a particularly hilarious statement in an interview where they basically said that they never gave the option for an 18 plus content patch was so they can appeal to a wider audience, which I did suppose work given If My Heart Wings pretty successful Steam release. But they used the rather hilarious wording of them wanting to potentially reach 12 year old French girls, which has since become one of the biggest memes in the visual novel community. However, apparently the official release for hardcore visual novel fans went beyond the lack of 18 plus content and more into the way If My Heart of Wings was translated in the text. So generally things read well, you could get the main story, but there were issues where apparently they refused to refer to things like boobs and instead put stuff like eyes instead. Another big point of contention is Ageha has a route where in the original Japanese release, a huge part of the drama in that route was there was a potential friends with benefits aspect. But considering that Moe novel refused to talk about sex in the translation, it was apparently very confusing what the route was even supposed to be about. So this naturally led to one of the biggest 18 plus patch projects to ever exist, with a fan group on Fu novel doing a full on retranslation from the ground up of the original Japanese version. It's noted to supposedly be more faithful to the Japanese text, to the point where ever since this patch came out, people cite this 18 plus retranslation patch as a completely necessary way to experience If My Heart of Wings as the original Japanese release intended. To end this 18 plus talk, we have to go into a more modern version of a controversial non 18 plus release in Laplacian's Cyanotype Daydream. Similar to If My Heart of Wings, Laplacian for some reason decided to not have an optional 18 plus patch despite the fact that for their previous releases Newton and the Apple Tree with Soul Press and Future Radio and the Artificial Pigeons with Nekonyan, there are 18 plus patches for those just fine. But for some reason, when Laplacian decided to self-publish Cyanotype, it appears the intention was they wanted to move away from their 18 plus roots and become a more mainstream friendly visual novel developer. Naturally, this alone sparked a huge controversy where many people online and even YouTubers cover this lack of having an 18 plus option like basically every other modern visual novel translation company does at this point. However, there is yet another big change that led to many people outright refusing to support the game, which is likely what led to Laplacian apparently never wanting to translate a title anymore. Changing Case 1 from a high school setting into a college setting. Now, Case 1 of Cyanotype Daydream has a pretty heavy theme that will likely not sit well with some people, even as a serious story. A theme where a mid 40s teacher eventually cheats on his wife with his high schooler student. Now, the change from the high school girl and the high school setting to college is a little bit more confusing. My impression based on interviews and well, the process of getting visual novels on Steam is generally if a girl has a high school uniform and there are potential adult themes, that alone is enough to potentially have Steam get a title banned. Generally, this is a big deal because Steam is generally noted to be the most popular leak way for people to buy visual novels due to the pretty good conveniences. Apparently in the full English release, the actual edits to college were apparently pretty lazy and the text still made references to things like homeroom which only apply to Japanese high schools and not colleges. And then there's the whole debate of whether you think the new outfit for the main girl of case one is necessary compared to the typical high school uniform she was originally wearing. Naturally, these changes led to a whole fan project to restore the 18 plus content as well as the original high school setting in case one and all the references to high school and stuff. For all the 18 plus projects I just talked about, I think the general lesson is clear. Do not deprive fans of their optional 18 plus content, and if you do, you better have a damn good reason. Alright, and that's the video. There are likely other fan improvement patches I didn't get to, but I felt like I covered the major ones and why they're important to the visual novel scene. Other than that, feel free to leave a comment on your thoughts and opinions on fan improvement patches for official leases of visual novels.